Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give you the complete guide to the Norwood scales. I'm going to show you seven examples and then at the end of the video I'm actually going to show you our top three ways to help you regrow healthy hair. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you are new to the channel, do make sure to hit subscribe if you want updating on any of the latest hair loss news or any breakthroughs that we find out about. Now any of the links that we mentioned can be found in the description below. And guys, just before we get into the video, if you're worried about your hair loss, what you can do is click the link in the description and take the Hair God Hair Loss Quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss and then you'll actually receive free expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. So click the link in the description to take the Hair God Hair Loss Quiz and now let's get into the video. Now, if you're facing hairline recession, you may be wondering exactly where you fall on the hair loss scale. After all, knowing this can tell you a lot about the cause of your hair loss and may even give you hope for treating it. In this video, we'll introduce to you the Norwood scale. This will include a complete walkthrough of the seven major stages and seven real examples that you can use to measure your own loss. At the end of the video, I'll also share three steps that you can take right now to stop hair loss and perhaps even reverse it. Now first guys, what is the Norwood Scale? Well, the Norwood Scale is a classification system used by hair loss professionals to diagnose different stages of male pattern baldness. It consists of seven major stages and various subsets. This scale, also referred to as the Hamilton Norwood Scale, was first developed by Dr. James Hamilton in the 1950s. The scale was later revised by Dr. Otar Norwood in the 1970s and this revision is the one most commonly referred to today. The main additions to the scale first developed by Hamilton were subsets. These offered variations in the hair loss pattern and they will be explained in more depth later. So let's look at the seven stages of the Norwood scale. The Norwood scale offers a solid outline of the different stages of hair loss and while slight variations may occur, its use by hair loss professionals is a testament to its accuracy. So, let's take a closer look at different stages as well as examples. So, stage 1. Sometimes referred to as a juvenile hairline, those with stage 1 on the Norwood scale are said to have no hair loss at all. In fact, this is the stage that most boys' hair will remain at until their hairline matures, typically in the late teens and early 20s. It's quite rare to retain a stage 1 hairline throughout your entire life, however, a few well-known figures have done just that. The late Ronald Reagan is one example and he's joined by another former president, Bill Clinton, as well as chef and television personality, Anthony Bourdain. And stage two. It's at this stage on the Norwood scale that men begin to notice a slight recession in their hairline. This can be alarming, but it doesn't always mean their hair loss is imminent. As young men lose their juvenile hairline, a more mature one will emerge. This is distinguished by a slight recession at the temples. At this stage, such a hairline is not considered to be a sign of male pattern baldness. It can quickly change, however, as men transition from stage 2 to stage 2a. Considered by many hair loss professionals to be the true start of hair loss, stage 2a of the Norwood scale consists of a very clear recession at the temples and front hairline. For many men, the M shape will start to disappear as the patch of hair at the front begins to recede alongside the temples. And stage 3. At this point on the scale, the classic M shaped associated with the male pattern baldness will again become more noticeable. This is the point where many men begin to seriously consider their hair treatment options. While the M shape can be lost at stage 2, it will reappear as the temples recede even further. In stage 3 A hair loss, the recession isn't quite so deep as 3, but it is more noticeable. An additional subset of stage 3 is 3V. Along with the increased hairline recession, this class of hair loss also begins to affect the vertex or crown of the head. A popular figure with a clear stage 3 distinction is the late President Richard Nixon. And stage 4. The difference between stage 3 and 4 can be mild but they're noticeable if you know what to look for. In particular, men at stage 4 will have a more recession at the temples. This will form a deeper M shape and the strip of hair in the middle may even begin to thin around the edges. In addition, thinning at the crown becomes more noticeable. This stage of hair loss is best seen on actor Jude Law. The recession in his temples has deepened beyond stage 3 and thinning of the middle patch of hair is also evident. And stage 5. 
At this point, a small patch of hair may or may not still be present at the front of the scalp. If it is present, it has become slimmer and the hair at the temples is completely gone. In both 5 and 5V, the patch will likely be present. However, in 5A, the patch is completely gone as the recession is complete. In 5V, you'll also notice the patch of hair loss on the vertex is growing. The late James Gandolfini shows this stage well. And stage 6. As the midway between stages 5 and 7, stage 6 is marked by deepening of the loss at the hairline and vertex. At this point, the small patch of hair that was once at the front is completely gone. The thinning and loss at the vertex increases and this widens the patch of balding. The strip of hair dividing the vertex and hairline is almost entirely gone. And finally, stage 7. The most severe form of male pattern baldness, stage 7, is distinguished by complete hair loss on the hairline and top of the scalp. The only hair that remains is a strip that wraps from one side under the ear to the other. Two examples are Jason Alexander and Larry David of Seinfeld. So how do you actually diagnose these different stages of hair loss? Well, if you believe that you fall on the Norwood scale, it's important to meet with a professional hair loss specialist for an official diagnosis. While you may not be interested in the treatments that they offer, including minoxidil, finasteride and transplants, it's still good to know where you are on your hair loss journey. The way in which your hair loss is diagnosed will depend on the specialist you see. A dermatologist or hair loss restoration surgeon will likely perform a variety of medical tests. These include blood draws and biopsies. However, this is mostly for confirmation purposes as a trained professional can typically diagnose the stage of loss with just a look. So, let's say you're suffering with male pattern baldness, how do you regrow your hair? Well, the simple fact is, the earlier you begin your regrowth efforts, the better your results will be. This means monitoring yourself for signs of hair loss early if you suspect it will be a problem, and treating the issues proactively. Hair loss isn't a problem for everyone, but two thirds of American men will notice signs of thinning and loss by the age of 35. This increases to 85% by the age of 50. This shows that hair loss, whether caused by genetics or environment, is a serious concern for the vast majority of men and even some women. As such, I recommend that you take a proactive approach to hair loss treatment and begin to treat it before your loss progresses on the Norwood scale. So what does this look like? Well first, we recommend that you remove store-bought hair products from your hair care routine. This includes shampoos, conditioners and styling products. The ingredients within these products, such as alcohol and SLS, can cause harm to the scalp including dryness, itching and irritation. That's because many of the ingredients are additives that are meant to preserve the shampoo's integrity. They have nothing to do with your hair or scalp's health. Second, I suggest cleaning up your diet. At first, this may mean removing alcohol, dairy and other inflammatory foods. However, we do advocate that you move closer and closer to an alkaline diet as you progress on your journey. Why? Because you are what you eat. If you suffer from male pattern baldness, then DHT is a likely culprit. DHT is produced by the interaction between testosterone and 5-AR, or 5-alpha reductase. The less 5-alpha reductase within the body, the less DHT is produced. Now, fortunately, a way to reduce 5-AR's activity is with alkaline foods. Just like most enzymes, 5-AR thrives in an acidic environment. As the foods you eat enter your bloodstream, they leave either an acidic or alkaline ash. By moving to a more alkaline diet, you increase the pH of your bloodstream and reduce the activities of 5-alpha reductase. And third and final, a regular scalp massage and exercise routine is a great way to increase blood flow and revive the hair follicles. In fact, this is one of the most powerful ways to regrow your hair. Now, just before we go any further, I'm going to link you to a video that we did on how scalp tension can play a huge role in hair loss. So I'll link that to you in the description so you can further your knowledge on this. Now, basically, without proper oxygen delivery, your hair follicles can begin to choke. Essentially, they'll slowly wither and die as the oxygen deprivation continues. As this happens, the follicles miniaturize and this further complicates the delivery of oxygen. Of course, it also causes the hair strands to reduce in width and length. When you use scalp massages and exercises to stimulate blood flow, you also bring in more oxygen to the follicles. This is one of the key components of a healthy scalp. Now if you're just starting your hair regrowth journey, it helps to get a solid idea of exactly how much hair loss you've experienced. That's where the Norwood scale comes in handy. However, that's only just the beginning. With this information in hand, it's now your turn to make the necessary changes to see regrowth. It won't always be easy, especially when it comes to lifestyle changes, but it's all worth it in the end. So guys, that's what we want to share with you on the Norwood scale. 
Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to take the Hair God Hairless quiz. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.